guys? What's going on? Oh, you're not doing good, eh? Oh, that's a shame. What happened? What? No. No, man, you're crazy. What? Let me do the review. What review? Oh, oh, right, right. Um, today's toy spot. We're gonna be having a look at Marvel Legends Face Off, Arch Enemies Iron Man versus Mandarin. Now, this is the initial Iron Man set. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, there was also a uh, War Machine that came with a red costumed Mandarin as well, which I'll show you when we get the back of the, the package looking uh, look there. Um, on the front of the package, uh, pretty standard. I mean, you've got the, the display stand dividing up the two figures. It's common with most face-off figures. Um, you can't see it, but there is actually a backdrop behind there as well. If we have a look at the back of the package, and I'll try to keep the package end of this pretty quick. I just don't want you guys to get bored out of your mind here. Um, but the other figures in this wave, if I can pan down here, the other figures in the wave are Wolverine and Sabretooth, there's the Iron Man and Mandarin, and then there's Punisher and Jigsaw. Um, most notably, I just want to point out that it seems a common trend that, uh, maybe not so much for the Wolverine, but I, I've noticed with the, at least with this wave, and it might, it might just be me, that certain figures, especially like the, the Iron Man here, that they tend to put the good figure, they don't tend to put two good figures together. Now, some would argue with me that War Machine is, is just as good as Iron Man, but if you ask me, like, I would have preferred uh, the red cloaked Mandarin with the Iron Man and then like the War Machine with the other. Um, I probably would not have picked up the War Machine but I do really want to get the Mandarin so I probably will pick this setup set as well. Um, kind of the same idea with the Jigsaw here. I think the Jigsaw looks nicer in his suit than he does in the Punisher outfit. Um, so I probably will, I haven't picked up this set either. Uh, if I do uh, I will do a review of it as well. Uh, really nice Wolverine as well. I, I think this Wolverine is a lot nicer than the Marvel Select Wolverine, which uh, I, I'm just not sold on. I, I don't like the mask at all on it. But uh, if you have a good Hulk, like a face-off Hulk, and you want a really good first appearance Wolverine, this this is the Wolverine you want to pick up. Um, there's a bit of a read-up. It says, Industrial tycoon turned superhero Anthony Stark joined the Avengers as the Invincible Iron Man after inventing a suit of near-indestructible armor. Using his armor's vast array of weaponry to fight for mankind, Iron Man would soon clash with the Mandarin, a would-be conqueror who employs the mystical might of ten powerful rings. Ten. Ten. Uh, seeking to use the technology behind Ar uh, Iron Man's armor as a means to advance his diabolical schemes, the Mandarin has waged a war against the most despised enemy. Iron Man battles heroically, knowing that he alone stands in the way of the maniacal Mandarin's ultimate goal, world domination. I love maniacal. Maniacal is probably one of the coolest words out there. You can slap maniacal on everything, and uh, it sounds cool. But there you have packaging. I know it's rather long, but uh, we'll get right into the figures now, and uh, we'll get a closer look at Iron Man and Mandarin. Stay tuned. And here is Iron Man and Mandarin. Uh, before we look at the figures, the comic that it comes included with this set is Iron Man 311, Unmasked by the Mandarin. Um, now looking at the figures themselves... Um, I gotta say it's a pretty good set. Now I I, uh, I didn't comment on this at the time that I had the package um, sealed, just because I didn't want to make a mistake here. But uh, as I was mentioning before, the it's it's unfortunate that they com they put um, they don't put strong figures together. Like for example, as I said, I really wanted to get the Iron Man, but to get an unmasked. Mandarin, and I wasn't sure if this mask came off, so I didn't say it during the package, but to get an unmasked Mandarin, uh, I, you have to actually pick up the war machine. It would have been nice, I know, it would have been nice if they actually had given you an unmasked uh, Mandarin, because as you can see, this, this mask isn't going anywhere. 
but it would have been nice if you got an unmasked Mandarin, even in the green outfit, uh, included with Iron Man. So that is sad, to say the least. Um, as you can see as well, the backdrop that they come with is a really neat looking um, backdrop that has all the Iron Man suits. So if you have Iron Man and you, you want a nice little diorama, a uh, pretty good diorama. I mean, I'm not usually one that sells dioramas all that well, but uh, I think that's kind of neat. I mean, if nice little thing to show off your figures in front of. Um, looking at Iron Man first, as you can see, I left the mask off just so you could see Iron, uh, Tony Stark first. It's not a bad Tony Stark. I mean, Tony Stark's face never looks never looks that good when it's just a plate you have to take off although I do like the first appearance Iron Man what was it from the Mojo series I thought that was a pretty good face on Tony Stark but as you can see um, I've got the plate off right now he comes with this little tiny plate which if you're not careful guaranteed you're gonna lose it so I'm just gonna put it on right now and Hopefully that, uh, oops, get it on just right here. For some reason it's not, uh, it's not letting me put it, there we go. Just had to slide it underneath. Cool. Um, he also comes with a couple of things to put on his arms. Repulsor rays, is that, is that what it is? And put the other one on here as well. It looks like you could put them on either side. I don't think. I don't think they're specific. Um, now I, I'm going to say this, and uh, I'm probably going to have a couple of people comment down below say, "No, man, what are you talking about?" Um, I I would say, aside from a few gripes I have with this figure, and I'll get into it right away, but I would say that this is probably one of my favorite Iron Man figures. Uh, the reason for it probably has something to do with Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Uh, to me, this kind of looks like Iron Man from Marvel vs. Capcom, and I love that game, so uh, I don't know. I, I, it's a decent looking Iron Man. Yes, okay, there are probably better Iron Mans out there, but I don't know. This is probably one of my favorites, though. It's a, it's a neat looking Iron Man. It's not too big. You know, it's a good size. Um... But I think overall it's it's pretty solid. It's definitely pretty solid. Now, uh, talking about some gripes I have with the figure, there is some quality problems. Like as you can see, I've got a little bit of uh, paint flaking at where you can see the joint here. You can see that there's some paint actually coming off. Same idea with this side as well. The mask also has a little bit of paint paint problem, especially up at the top corner here. I don't know if I'm going to get it off right now, but there we go. Um, but I think where the figure really suffers is right about the torso, mid-torso area. Um, as you can see, they have it looks like they've clearly put yellow over top of the existing color, whether it be red. It almost looks like there's a blue or gray underneath there, but the paint application is a bit sloppy. As you can see, you can see it a lot of the bleed through in the yellow uh, in the torso or in the abdomen section you can see that some of the paint has actually started lifting um, there's there is also some paint right here which I think I had my finger over some paint right here you can either see it's it's either more, too much paint on the edge um, or it's gotten chipped the uh, the gold is a bit sloppy too it almost looks like there's a little hair or something in the uh, in the paint. Um, but that aside, I mean, I, I still like this figure. Uh, it's it's still a good, decent figure. Um, his articulation, it seems like he has a ball joint, but as you can see, his head doesn't move up and down very much at all, so it, it, probably not. But it looks like he can kind of tip his head a little bit left and right as well. But the head does rotate. Um, he has a ball joint in his elbow, although, as I mentioned, the paint seems to be coming off a fair bit on this figure. You can even see it on the arm, too. There's all this additional paint. 
And you're probably thinking to yourself, boy, all these gripes and you still love this figure. Yes, I do. Um, there is articulation in the bicep. There is two points in the elbow. There's also articulation in the wrist and also in the hand and also in the fingers. Um, my problem though is unless you keep the, uh, the hand closed he's got this really wonky kind of hooked finger artic sculpt. You see it on a bunch of figures. They all seem to kind of have that. I'm not a big fan. If anything, I guess if it was straight and you folded it then he just looks stupid as well. But um, There you go. Uh, as I mentioned there's articulation in the mid torso abdomen area but I'm thinking the more I move that, the more it's going to start chipping on me. There's articulation in the waist, which is a bit actually loose on this figure. There's a ball joint in the leg. There's a swivel in the thigh. Two points in the knee. There's rotation in the calf, or in the shin. A foot, and also in the toe. So, even though it's not paint-wise, it's not a, the greatest figure, I mean, it still holds up in articulation. Which is which is pretty good. Um, now we'll look at Mandarin, who just fell over here. Now, unfortunately, Mandarin suffers a bit more just because of the way he's got this this rubber cloak. Um, he has what looks to be articulation in the head, like the head can bend down, but because of his hair, you can't you can't lift the head any further than that. Unfortunately. Now he has articulation in the arms, um, but again, like you're not gonna you're not gonna get much movement just because this this rubber cloak, if you want to call it a cloak, um, pretty much impedes all articulation in this figure. You get articulation in the hand, and actually you can make out that he's sporting the uh, the ten rings there, but you can't you can't really do anything with this figure. Um, you can kind of move the arms up a bit, and you can move them down. You can kind of move them out, but being that this is on the figure, you really don't know if you're going to break the arm off. You know, sometimes you can tell right away if a figure doesn't want to move, and you, you start moving it, and then there goes the arm. But in this case, you can't really tell because of this thick, heavy rubber um, cloak that's on the, uh, that's on the Mandarin here. Um, same idea with his legs. He has articulation in the legs and the knees. There's two points in the knee. And shin and foot and toe. But again, you're not going to get much movement. Just for the same reason I mentioned earlier. Um, Mandarin comes also with these energy magic kind of... What do you want to call it? Energy beams... If you want to pretend like he's uh, he's got he's shooting his magic at uh, Iron Man, I don't know if I got that right. It looks like there's a thumb sculpt up at the top here. So I guess kind of like that. It's not bad. I mean, it's you know I probably won't have it on the figures, but it's, it's not bad. Um, now speaking of diorama earlier, I'll put Mandarin back down here. This is a this is gonna be a long review. You know what, Mandarin can just lay down for a second. He's going to take a nap. Um, he come, they come also with a stand, and it says Stark on there. You can actually take the diorama and I'd say peg it in, like kind of slide into a place. There's a groove to it. And there's also, I didn't do this with the Incredible Hulk just because I was pressed for time. But now that I've got more time on my hands, I can do this. And what you can do is you can set the figures up like that on, on the uh, display stand. Very similar to the older Marvel Legends, they've got the, uh, the posable, um, what do you want to call them, peg, peg stands, I guess if you want. Iron Man has one, and also Mandarin has one, which you can't, probably can't see because of the hair, but the idea is you can peg them into their, into their bases. Which, uh, you know, I guess works. The only problem is if you're going to have them, you, you know, if you're going to have them on the ground or on the, uh, on the floor, then it doesn't make much sense to have them pegged in. 
or if you want to have Mandarin levitating, I guess you can do that as well. Like that. Now the only problem is with this backdrop, as you can see, the weight of them is kind of leaning the uh, the set forward. You probably won't have this problem if you have it just on a regular surface. But uh, will, will I probably use these these actual peg stands? Probably not. I could probably just have them on display as is. But uh, you know, it's kind of neat that you you have that if you really want. You know, if you want to have them fighting in, in the in sky or, you know, yeah. So, I mean, not really much else to say. It's a good set. I mean, there, there's, if you overlook, unpeg him here, if you overlook some of the real paint problems with this figure, I mean, it it definitely has charm to it. It's definitely a figure I like. I mean, it's, it's again, one of my favorite Iron Mans, but it might just have something to do with Marvel vs. Capcom. Um, as for the Mandarin, though, again, I think the the better Mandarin is with War Machine. So I, I I don't like the I don't like the fact that they got the helmet on him. But there you have a toy spot on the Marvel Legends face off. You have Iron Man and you also have Mandarin. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, with that, I'll catch you guys next time. Later.